What's up guys, Nightingale here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be covering the custom triple banner coming to Epic Seven on April 21st, 2022. This has been a re pretty requested thing for me um, to cover this banner and give you my suggestions on what to select from it, how to go about it. So first off, let's uh, bring up the page and first cover the information. Also, I do wanna say real quick for everybody, please use the timestamps below. Um, I don't know exactly how long this video is gonna be, but I'm gonna have each section uh, labeled for each person or for each type of player we're gonna be talking about. So do make sure you check out the timestamps below because <clears throat> that's gonna help you navigate this video. All right, so let's start with this. Let me bring it up here so I'm not looking at that screen and I can read this a little bit bigger. All right, so the custom group summons, you'll be able to meet the custom group summon, which was previously introduced on a special broadcast on February 16th from um, April 21st, uh, 2022. That is what this is being done. So how the custom summons work. Hero criteria, heroes, who have been released at least six months before the end of the custom summon for limited heroes who have had at least one rerun collaborations are not included and that's going to include luna deanne landy seaside bologna holiday euphine cerise and fairy tale tenebria okay next up let's see here it says the custom group summon is a system that will allow heirs to proceed in summoning three Five-star heroes of their choice. The conditions for the target hero are, one, the target hero, um, the target heroes are limited and covenant heroes that have had at least one rerun, but have not had a banner in the last six months. Two, um, how the custom summon works is hero availabil availability criteria has had at least one rerun, and it has at least six months since its release. Collaboration units are not included. Limited heroes are um, Luna, Deanne, Landy, Seaside, Bologna, Holiday, Euphine, and Tenebria, which they are speaking of fairy tale Tenebria here. Um, not only are the five star heroes you select, the <clears throat> not only the five star hero you select, the five star artifact is also included. For example, if you choose Tamron, Idol's Cheer, uh, artifact will be included as the target when you summon via the custom group. Every summon will award you one star mileage coin, and with these you can acquire selected heroes or artifacts. During this period, the custom group summon that was previously announced to begin on April 21st until 519 for four weeks, and details are below. <clears throat> the unlock con conditions for this are sh uh, Shrieking Hall Episode 1, Chapter 10, 10-10 to put this into layman's turn beat the entire first episode there you go how to use unlock the cust unlock condition select three heroes within the period and start the custom summon a group of three a cust a group summon for three heroes of your choice for two weeks from the start of the custom group summon more details on the custom group summon will be announced in a separate notice. Now, what I want to talk about here is this. For you guys, um, before we completely commit to theories and ex everything like that, use this video mostly as a trying to figure out how to plan ahead. We will give you any final details on the 20... Yes, it'll be the uh, Wednesday's patch uh, update notice here on the channel. So watch for that, and we will cover all of the uh, intricate details that they have not laid out here, um, and we'll go forth with that. So what we want to do is, let's see here. Can I get this to where you can see it a little bit? So you can kind of get an idea right here, and if I go over here, you can see how it's selecting. Now, what I've done already is I've put together some slides for you that will um, help out a great bit here. Uh, before we get started, though, I do want to put this warning out. Um, I've already seen a lot of people ask and say that this is what they're going to do, and it doesn't make any sense. So here's some real talk for you players. If you are missing Seaside Bologna and Holiday Euphine, this is not the banner to pull them on okay in 90 days from this banner they are in range of being available do not 
Under no circumstances select Seaside Bologna or Holiday Euphine from this banner. Now, you're probably going, but I need them or I want them. Correct. But what this is going to allow you to do is to prioritize other heroes that have already been rerun that will not be rerun till the end of the year. So that means you'd have to wait another six months, potentially, to pull some of these units. So think about it like this. Summer will be 90 days after this banner. They will be in window. Seaside Bologna is most likely going to get her own banner. Holiday Euphine was gonna get, is going to get her own banner. Uh, Summer Asaria is going to get her own banner. And then there's going to be a new Summer unit. Now, the reason why I say this is because Guilty Gear just re-ran. And they've changed how, they, how I thought they were going to do it. Because they had now four banner units, they ran four separate banners. I was, I was under the impression that they were going to run a triple banner with three units on it, and then have Jacko running beside it. But because they are perfectly able to stagger them out, it made sense for them to put four units together in each separate banner. So do not expect a triple banner here. As much as I would love to see it for the summer units, don't expect it here. Um, so save your bookmarks, get through some very important units now, and then get the summer units when summer shows up. Okay. So what I've prepared here is um, a little bit better view of what this is going to look like. Now, first off, this is the Guilty Gear from uh, this is the Guilty Gear banner from uh, last year. This is obviously what we didn't have, but this would have been the better option for most players, and this is what I wish you guys would have gotten. But here we are. You didn't. So uh, basically, how this is going to work is you will be able to choose the three heroes that go inside this pretty freaking cool i have to admit that's a very great idea i hope that this isn't the only time this shows up and that this is more of an event thing that they run every now and then i also want to put here that this would be the perfect case scenario to do this so smilegate if you are listening here is what i would recommend start doing this at least once a quarter and what this will do is this will declassify Luna, Deanne, Landy, Seaside Bologna, Holiday Euphine, Cerise, and Fairytale Tenebria as once a year limited units. What this allows for you as a company to now no longer have to run these banners once a year, you can now put them in this general pool on this custom banner. And now what you are doing is you're now taking the pressure off of these units because they can be acquired now basically once a quarter whenever you decide to run this event. And now it allows new free slots for new collab places. It allows for new limited units inside of Epic 7 as far as your own creations. As well as more seasonal units. Because they're fun. Let's be real. Having summer units is great. Having, um, <clears throat> you know, if you want to get into different types of themes, it's great. Because it'll allow you to have the space to do it. So, with that being said, this is the shop. Uh, or this is the banner and here is the shop right here so <clears throat> how this works is this this banner has no pity none meaning you can pull indefinitely on this and there will be no guaranteed summon off of the banner your pity is the coins you earn along the way it's all about the friendship you know you get that that whole joke okay so anyway for one pull is once is one coin Units are 120 coins a piece. They can be bought indefinite here. Now, Soul, Junkyard Dog, and Portrait of Savior are, again, based off of... This is based off of Guilty Gear. We cannot take this section of it into account. But what we can do is take into account the artifacts up there, which is how this will work. You'll be able to buy one per rotation for coins... And then I'm sure they're going to have a way for you to burn some coins as like they did here on Guilty Gear. Now, what this also does, which is very, very important, which is what they mentioned in the live stream, but they never talked about here, is that it actually, when you select your units, it puts the artifact in for powder, which is very, very vital. Now, remember, each artifact that is currently on banner is 240 powder and can only be bought once per rotation so in theory you can guarantee two artifacts of the same type with this system so take that in consideration and some of my things and my suggestions are kind of based around this so what we're going to do 
is we're gonna do this by where you're playing at in the game, I'm gonna give you some of my suggestions. So, they're not necessarily, all of these are rated as in this order, but these are going to be suggestions, okay? You guys wanted my opinions, we waited for the balance patch notes, we are ready to rock and roll. So here we go. For brand new beginning players, all right? Brand new. So I mean, first to 30 days, depending on where you guys are at right now inside of Epic 7, this is going to be your guaranteed first two units you're going to put on your banner. You're going to be after Tamron, and you're going to be after Landy. Two very, very, very vital units for you. Now, why I say from day one to day 30 players is because I'm setting this video up for not only new players that are just starting, that are about to start, but to future start, because I don't know how long and where this is going to be, because again, not all the details are completely out. So what we're going to say is if you're a brand new player, this is your absolute highest priority. Now, here in this case, you probably are going to want to buy Tamron if you don't get her. Now, the unfortunate thing here is Wall of Order is not an artifact you need to be concerned about, all right? But the goal is, is that you're able to land at least one of these two units and then buy the other one. Now, there's a third slot. So what I've done is I'm going to give you three suggestions that I think will help you as a brand new player out, depending on if you happen to get it. Now, this will probably not be a unit you will buy. It's just you hope you get it along the way, and we're going to talk about it. So, right here, for brand new players, these are my suggestions here. We have Fire Ravi, who has Sigurd Scythe. We have Grass Iceria, who has Song of Stars. And then we have the limited unit, Luna, with her artifact, Draco Plate. Now, why I suggest these three for you as beginning players is because these are some general use units. All of them are great, all of them will help you out, and all three have very high value artifacts. But, again, it's going to be a choice because you have two slots already committed. So, here's the thing. A lot of players can really value, get value, for brand new players you can get value out of a Syria. But, here's why I'm saying this. Because we don't quite have the... Um, full details yet <clears throat> on the new um, event hero thing for hunts might change the selective summon to maybe Summer Asaria. So I'm including her here because of the value of her artifact. That's the main reason why we're putting here. But both Ravi and Luna are great for new players because of different things that they're able to do. Ravi's really just was an absolute monster for quite a long time when it came to PvE content, as well as she was dominant for a long time in PvP. But she's fallen off. Iceria has the ability to pair very well with Tamron, so if you do, do not have her, Iceria is going to be a great choice. Because she can reset Tamron instantly, doing this tam Seria combo, which allows Tamron to go into her idle form turn one. It's a really neat trick that's been used along the way. Also, we have Luna here, who is one of my, I guess, say, favorite ice units. I really like her kit. Now, the reason why I put her here is because if you don't pull her now, you're going to have to wait at least the minimum of probably six months to see this unit again. So that's why I put her in here. Plus, Draco Plate for a lot of warriors is a really, really good artifact. So it's kind of like if you get it along the way, great. Sigurd Scythe is another very, 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 very powerful artifact for... Um, it's another very powerful artifact for warriors. But again, it depends on how you're going. I'm more looking at you trying to pick up a unit versus their artifacts. But if you happen to get one of these along the way, great. Okay, now the next group of people. I classify you guys as the first 90 days, beginning players. So to me, the beginning is really that first 100 days. But I decided to say first 90 because it depends on how, you, how you've been playing. So depending on if we move 90 days back, 90 days forward, we're in range of you potentially having Landy here. But again, the still the thing, the, the song remains the same here. You still don't have Tamron. You still don't have Landy. These two are absolutely vital for you along the way and again for you guys for beginning players i still recommend these three same units but for now slightly different reasons because assuming if you may have landy you may want to add one of these 
or you may want to look at their artifacts, depending on where you're at and how you're playing. Some people may be struggling with Wyvern, so they may want the Song of Stars for the target. Um, they may want um, Luna just because it's Luna. You may want it the Draco Plate. You may want Sigurd Scythe. You may be looking at Ravi for other things. So out of this, I'm trying to give you guys some light options. But honestly, here's what I really suggest for both beginning and... and um, for the beginning and new players is... I've been saying just kind of use the third slot as a fun slot. Um, if you get it, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. Because you both are in a weird position that you're only going to be able to get probably by one of these units. You, beginning players, might be able to get by two, depending on if you've been saving up properly or not. Okay. Now things are going to get a little more interesting from here on out. So, for intermediate players, I'm going to classify you guys, even though I don't still technically classify you as intermediate players, but we'll give you guys the benefit of the doubt. Your first really 180 days, so you're post 100 days, and you are around the 180 day mark, somewhere in here. The reason why now I have these three here is because if you still don't have Tamron, yes, you still need to pick up Tamron. Now, at this point, Landy has guaranteed been rerun for you guys, so you may already have Landy, but if not... Pick her up now. This is the this is probably now one of your majors. The reason I'm putting Luna here now is because you are in a little bit deeper. You probably don't need Luna, but you probably want Draco Plate. So that's why I'm going to recommend right now that this might be your first three. But I have more suggestions for you. So let's now say you own some of these units. What next and why? So the next direction I want to send you guys into is something like this. So now... Ravi herself may not be as good, but some of you might actually be in range of having have pulled Apocalypse Ravi. So here's great dupes for you to imprint her. And not only that, is Sigurd Scythe very, very, very good for a lot of warriors. Now, Euphine is here because some of you may have had to give up Baikon on Guilty Gear. It's currently being run right now, but still, between 100 days to 180 day players, depending on where your progression's at, you may not have been able to get Baikon, which now allows you to get Euphine for your one-shot comp. So this way, it gives you an instant open field right to a Banshee 13 one-shot unit, and she also works for Gollum one-shot, and she also can work for Asmanac one-shot and Katie's one-shot. So there's a lot of value here with Euphine, depending on how you want to play. Like I said, this is going to come down to if you had to make the hard call, you decided to get Jacko, or you decided to get Elfelt, Dizzy, um, you now have the ability to pick up at least a one-shot unit that will have a little harder time gearing, but you'll still be able to do the content just fine. Now, intermediate players, I'm now recommending Deanne. Now, the reason being is because this is probably the first time she's being rerun. I'm making this video before the banner. Obviously, it's, it is April 3rd, 2022, and we don't have the announcement yet that if she is getting her own banner. But with the custom, this custom triple banner being here on 421, makes me, makes me assume that her rerun by her getting that slight buff is because of this banner. Not because she's going to get her own banner before or after this. So, this is the first time since February of last year, I think it was February 23rd when the banner ended, or 24th, it was whatever that Thursday was, her banner ended. So it's been over a year now since she's been rerun, so this might be a good time for you guys to look at picking up Deanne. The buff was actually pretty good, and she's a good defensive version of Amelia. But I'm still not done. We've got other suggestions. So, depending on where you're at and how you're progressing, you may want to look also at Politis. Politis is a very good unit, especially with a bunch of these non-attack skill openers. She can be a hard counter to. She's able to be a Abyssal Crown user. She is able to strip. She's able, or well, roll turn, buffs back by one um, turn. So she has the ability to stun in her own kit. She's got a CR push on how she can cut in front of units. So she's got a lot in her kit that gives you guys some value if you don't have her yet and you're kind of getting screwed over by some of those players. Now, I recommended Violet here because, again, it depends on where you're at in your progression. I'm putting Violet in here because I feel like some of you may want him for PvP. And I'm thinking between this 100 and 180 day area, you kind of are lacking some PvP units because your focus has been so Wyvern 13 and focusing in on those small little details there. 
that it's time to start looking at some PvP units, so I decided to bring him in specifically for the unit. Now, Lulika, I can see some people probably staring at me going, why? If you've been following me along in the Beginner's Handbook, you know that I absolutely love and adore Lulika for uh, Wyvern 13. But you've also seen me use her in other hunts. She can be used in Katie's 13, as well as Azimanac 13, and I use her in Wyvern 13. She's also a fantastic expo unit. She's got a lot of high-end PvE value. So therefore, I decided to put her in this list so that we can make sure that we give you guys a really good chance at getting potentially a very good upgrade to a lot of your PvE content. Now, probably out of the most important thing here, though, for new or for these intermediate players is we need to talk about their artifacts a little bit. And if I'm going through these, really the important thing here for artifacts is Draco Plate. Luna's Draco Plate is just, like I said, it's a fantastic warrior artifact. When we go cover um, Ravi, we've got Sigurd Scythe, a very, very, very good warrior artifact. Also, Merciless Glutton is a really good um, warrior artifact. But I do value, personally, I value Sigurd Scythe and Draco Plate over Glutton. And then when we look here at artifacts, Knowledge Seed is good, but I feel like there's better artifacts out there depending on what you're doing. Violet's Talisman is more of the tanky, you know you're not going to kill a unit turn one and you're waiting for that build up to absolutely detonate um, a unit. So this is more like a long term game. Most people run Moonlight Dreamblade on Violet. Lulika, her artifact, while it is used on some units, uh, if you're using PvE, you're probably using Kaladra, uh, Leela Violin, or you're using Daydream Joker, depending on which hunt you're in. So as far as artifacts here, this is going to kind of depend on where you're at and what you've collected already. So that would be why I would say this, this section is more for you guys about the unit and probably a little less about the artifacts. Because this is gonna, what's going to set you guys up for the next half of the year, personally. Okay, next up. Mid-game players. Now, this one's changing the rules a little bit here as well. At this point, we're a lot less focused on units and we're more focused in on artifacts here. Because, depending on where you're at, you may have already pulled these. At least at six months now, if you've been playing for six months, most all of these units I'm going to name have had a rerun at some point. But, I'm also going to give you guys some honorable mentions later when we go into, we'll go back to the game for this. Because there are some rules that we're still not, one, we, they're clear, but the timing is really close. So I'll cover that in a minute. So here, for you guys, we're now looking at dupes as value. So if you guys have been playing for quite a while and you have Apocalypse Ravi, here's your imprints. Because going for that is not a bad decision. Sigurd Scythe is very, very good for you guys at this point. It's a fantastic warrior artifact that's going to carry you so much in PvP. I love this artifact to death. This is You're probably actually looking at my banner right here. And I didn't make this to, be, to show or gloat my banner. This is probably what I'm actually doing. Because I want Sigurd Scythes. I want dupes for her. I don't really care if I get another Luna. It'll open up the Covenant shop. But I really want the Draco plates. And I'm going to pick up Deanne. Because this is going to be now I'm assuming the chance to pick Deanne up. So this is where I'm going to grab her. But from here on out, things are going to get a little bit weird. And here's why. So next up. Mid-game players, these are some more suggestions. Why I'm going here is because it depends on how you've been playing and what's going on. Now, instantly, I know some of you are about to flip out and go, why in the world is K-Ron here? Alexa's Basket. That's why. Alexa's Basket is a insanely good artifact for assassins, thieves, whatever you want to call them. It's greater attack buff. So, for those of you who have been eluding this artifact, it doesn't want to show up for you. You can now guarantee probably two copies. You can get one for coins, and you can get one for powder. So, it at least gives you the shot at getting him. Now, yes, Kron himself is not that great. We did get promised last year a ML Kron at some point. So, you could potentially get dupes. Has Kron fallen off? Yes. But... The artifact is too good to pass up here. Next, you're probably going, dude, you have lost your mind. Why have you put Basar? The artifact. Abyssal Crown. With the recent release of Jacko, 
you can stack Abyssal Crown and Jacko's passive. Not physically stack, but you can basically get two different checks. A max Abyssal Crown is 1% worse than her full passive. So if you want to try to double stun check somebody, it is the way to go. Plus, to be fair, Basar isn't technically, he's fallen off, but he hasn't fallen off to certain units. If you understand your comps, you can still land the unbuffable on a lot of people and be able to push back here. So, Basar has some value, and also he was voted fairly high for his Moonlight, so if you own his Moonlight, here's a chance to get dupes. Now, this is probably going to be my most controversial and spiciest take of them all. I've put Cerise here for Cerise and not Guiding Light. To me, personally, Guiding Light is 100% dead in PvP. And the reason I say that is because Malim exists. Malim's passive is what allows stealth to be ignored, which makes this artifact absolutely obsolete because most of you run Guiding Light, but you're saying, I can control that. Sure, in some aspects. But as far as Guild War defense, assume they have Malim. In RTA, Assume they have Malim, unless you're going to hard lock in Malim in your draft. But then, now you got to play the game of, is that really the choice you want to go? And then when it comes to um, arena defense, assume they have Malim. Or they don't care and they're just going to AoE you. Basically the way to look at it. But, Cerise's value for PvE, for you guys, you may have had to give her up. Now... This is why I brought her here. It's because she was rerun in February. But knowing that some of you I, that I've talked to, you decided to skip Cerise because of just being resource short. She's fallen off in the meta because Pera was announced, and that also is just literally a power crep Cerise. So you guys, some of you decided to skip Cerise overall. I understand. So, but I've put her here in case you want to use her for her PvE aspects, which is still, she's still good in PvP. But she also has a lot of PvE value as well, just due to her overall kit. Next up is again, now we're getting out here into the weird side of things a little bit further. For more, let's say, endgame players. A lot of you have rolled for Lionheart Sermia. There's dupes for you. Also, to be fair, if you don't have Sermia, she's a great unit for your one-shot comps because you can use her in Golem one-shot, and it's probably one of the better ver better units to use there. And you can also use her in the Cadiz 13 one-shot comp. So, Sermia herself has value. Plus, there's a Guild War trick you could still probably use, but we'll save that for another day. Plus, Border Coin has a lot of value, because I see a lot of people wanting to run this on their uh, Conqueror Lilius. So, this is the chance for you to have an ability to pull for both. Some of you may already have both, but hey, this is here just as a suggestion. Next up is Destina. Now, why I put Destina here is because of her buffs. If you do not have Ruel of Light, here is you another version of a Reviver. If you have Ru Ru Ruel of Light, here's you some imprints if you already have Destina. Or Destina imprints if you, are, if you want to do that. But Shamadra Staff is also a pretty decent artifact. Decent for certain Soul Weavers because it is the just flat increase of 20 effect resistance. So depending on where you're at, it can help you resist more debuffs. Because we are getting into a deeper debuff meta um, right now. with Especially with the way they're, they're setting up some of these buffs. Expect to see a lot of debuffs. So a great way to counter that is ER. Now lastly, I decided to bring in here is Fire Charlotte. Now, the reason I brought in Charlotte is Elbrus Ritual Sword. So, as you can see here, for mid-game players, and, I mean, honestly, this is really in-game, or in later game players, it's about artifact collection and utilizing the maximum amount of trying to get the most value out of artifacts as well as units. So, Little Queen Charlotte is very, very good, as well as Fire Charlotte. So, imprints, either way, they are good. Or obtaining the unit, whichever way you would like to go. But in this case, I decided most of these actually based upon, well, Destina is based on the buffs, the other two are based on the artifact. Elvis Ritual Sword is one of a one of the better knight artifacts. Now, are there situationally better artifacts? Absolutely. But this is one that's just still better to collect if you need it. So that covers the list. Now, what I want to do here is I want to jump back to the game. Now, this section we're going to call the Honorable Mentions because we don't quite know 
exactly what it means. As of right now, it appears Ran can be in this banner. So let's jump here to the journal and make sure that we have this at full screen. We do. Okay, here we go. So if we jump in here real quick, we're going to look at five-star RGB units. And these are the honorable mentions that I wasn't going to directly put in on it. So let's just instantly go for, like I said, let's go down here to RAN. For those of you who have Summer Assyria and for whatever reason do not have RAN, here you go. Here's a unit for you. Um, literally the one of the fastest units in the, the second, or actually the fast, one of the fastest units in the game. So... Highest base speed next to k -Ron, or with k -Ron. So, he's can go fast. Can you be played other ways? Technically. But everybody makes him go fast. Um, I would also recommend that if you didn't have a chance to pick up Fairy Tail Tenebria, this is your chance to do it. Some people really like her artifact. I personally do not. I think Violin's better in most cases. Uh, some people may want to see the Rise of Etta because of, again, current meta things. Um, I like Alencia. I'm going to throw her in here. Uh, especially with the amount of buffs going on, I think she actually could see a uh, resurgence. Just people need to build her properly, and she can strip just about anything. The only thing you basically can't strip is a Maid Chloe. But then there's um, there's always Arc Demon Mercedes if you got it. Ignore Effect Resist. Soul Burns are so good. Um... Zahak does not appear to be in window, but again, it's going to come down to um, if it's the end, the very end of its of the four week time frame, he may be available for this. So this might be available for, to some people. Celine, if you had to pass her up, this is an honorable mention. This is a hard AOL counter. Not going to lie. Um, let's see here. Rowana is also another one I really decided to th thought about throwing in here, but I didn't because, again, she seems to get a lot of banners, so I didn't really want to suggest this. But, hey, if you're really needing Rowana for whether it be Hell Raid or a specific hunt or PvE content, the pass is broken. There's literally no other unit that does her job better than her. So Rowana is definitely an honorable mention. If it comes down to artifacts and we just want to talk about those... Um, in that case, the artifacts that I didn't put in here that you could really consider using, and this would just be based off of, um, just based off of what you're trying to do, um, would be, let's see here, it wasn't anything warrior. I thought about putting Lilius in here for Bastion, but... And Lilius kind of is an honorable mention because, again, if you build her with high ER, she can full cleanse off um, everything. So Lilius is definitely a option, but I like Bastion. So if you're after Bastion, now's a pretty decent time, time to pick it up. Um, Rise of Monarch could be good, but again, that's Cecilia. So if you have um, Fallen Cecilia, sure, that's dupes. Go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then Thief-wise... Um, People are going to get confused about, uh, where is it? I swear it's staring me right in the face. There it is. This is k -Ron's artifact, technically, but he always ships with Alexa's basket. So, unfortunately, this, is I think, is just a general pool artifact, so you won't be able to get that one here. Uh, as far as rangers go, um, there was no artifact that I saw that had enough value for people. Misha, so you technically, this would bring in Kana, but Misha is, right now, I believe, is in the powder shop. So I, it's hard for me to really suggest this one because it is Misha. and Well, it's Misha's great, but it, it, it's Kana. Use that one as really out there. Um... Etika Scepter, I can't remember the unit that this comes on. You'd have to do the research, um, but there is a mage that this ships with. So Etika Scepter is very broken on certain mages. Um, of course, Vivian, it should be an honorable mention, and a, a Dignus Orb can be used on certain things. Uh, but depends on where you're at, and we're going to be getting Vivian for free, potentially. Well, Vivian, Sermia, and... Um, Vivian, Sermia, and... Um, 
Sigrid are all going to be given away for free, but if you want the artifact or dupes for your Sage Vivian, Dignus Orb. Uh, Time Matter is Ludwig's artifact. I know it doesn't make any sense. He doesn't have an artifact, but Time Matters what ships with him. He's going to be on Banner here uh, soon. So, th and then Soul Weavers. Um, Celestine's definitely an artifact to look at. I don't remember who this shows up on. Um, Stella Harpa is Elena's. This is a really, really good one. Uh, of actually a very good Soul Weaver. Rod of Amaryllis is General Pool, so you don't really have any control over that. And then Guardian Ice Crystal is Amelia's artifact, so you won't have access to that. So those are like the general overall, like, I guess, honorable mentions to throw in here. Because again, it's where you guys are at in your accounts. And this is what makes this kind of subjective, but also um, trying to give you guys the best case lineups of things that I see from the beginner's perspective looking forward forward through your progression of what people struggle with, what people don't struggle with, um, what could improve for them, what is kind of a hindrance. So really the best case scenario in some people is maybe just ask, uh, get opinions. A lot of people are going to say certain, they're going to say very specific things and go hard into it. Again, I applaud you guys do not summon the summer units out of this. Please don't pick them. They're going to be run in 90 days from this banner. This starts April 21st. You have to wait till July for them to be rerun. That's it. And this gives you time to save and now be able to get those units you want. So... Thank you guys for watching. Again, I know this is a long video. It's highly subjective. You guys have asked for my opinion. That's my thought. Uh, you can use the uh, pause the video wherever you would like to be able to see, you know, just if you want to take screenshots of my selections, there you go. Uh, the video is always here for you to reference. And for anybody in the future, I don't know if this is going to be the same um, every time. Would my Right now, with the units we have in the game, my options are still probably going to be this for a while until balance changes and stuff come out. But for right now, this is going to stay up to date for a while. So if this does get rerun in, let's say, sometime before the end of the year, uh, if there is another video, great, we'll update it. If not, this should still be pretty good to go. Um, as long as nothing major changes, and if that does, yes, I'll come back and I'll redo this video for you guys. So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate all the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one.